Today we're tying 3 8 ball head jigs and we're adding stingers. Stay tuned! So we're back at the bench today and I am tying some 3 8 ball head jigs and we are adding stingers as you can see here here's one that um, I have a dozen of them sitting here uh, I've been tying up a bunch this is for a custom order um, it's an interesting color it's a color combination I don't use and uh, it's not something I keep in my inventory but we're going to add uh, the streamer or, or the uh, stinger hook, which is a must add 3399 number six hook. I tie them so they ride the same, facing the same direction. And this is um, something that, depending on which author you're, you're researching, um, particularly the guys that um, were tying tandem streamers for uh, fishing lake trout up north. Uh, there's two rules of thumb. The uh, hooks face in the same direction. The idea is that they uh, act as a keel to keep the streamer in line. Uh, the same thing with the jig. Uh, when you read about some of the guys that um, added stingers to the hooks in the similar fashion to the uh, streamer tires. The other rule of, uh, rule of thought, I guess, is with the hook riding up. So let's see if I can kind of show this. With the hook tied, with the stinger tied on separately, uh, opposite. So the so the stinger rides in this fashion. The thought with that is that uh, it increases your uh, hook hook set. I prefer them facing the same direction and I do think there uh, is something to be said about the balance when both hooks are facing the same direction. The Stinger hooks that I have tied up here are snelled onto a the 3399 must add hook. It's a number six. Um, six or eight is uh, typical in terms of size. I have, I sit and I, I'll just sit and I'll snell a hundred or so of these at a time. I just hang them on my rack and they're there when I need them. In terms of uh, the line that you attach the stinger hook with, we're using a 30 pound uh, mono. It's just the Trilene uh, big game, 30 pound mono line. If you uh, look at some of the old authors, uh, the guys that were tying tandem streamers, uh, Bates and uh, who are the other two that I really like? Um, Dick Stewart and Bob Lehman. Um, they talk about using braided wire, um, which, depending on what you read, the descriptions kind of change. Sometimes it sounds like a seven strand uh, uncoated wire. And then I've seen illustrations where it literally looks like florist wire twisted together so you have a loop uh, at one end holding the hook and and then you lash it on to the uh, the jig or the streamer hook um, just like we're going to do today uh, they also use uh, a surflon which this is um, nice to use it works very well I kind of like the surf line a little bit better than the monofilament 
mainly because if it bends, you get a, you catch a fish on it, you can kind of bend it back. Um, you get a big fish with the stinger, with the monofilament. If it thrashes a lot, the monofilament can get bent out of shape and you can't really bend it back into place. Uh, reading baits. Um, he recommends using the coated wire, the Surflon. And uh, Bates loves head cement, <laughs> loves, loves lacquer-based head cement. Um, in his description, not only does he uh, coat the base coats of thread, you're coating the top coats of thread, and then you're coating everything on top of that, regardless whether you're using a coated wire or not. Uh, the other book that I would recommend, uh, Dick Stewart and Bob Lehman's book, uh, they recommend against using lacquer, anything but lacquer. So the Sally Hansen's super glue, uh, any of the other types of finishes. Stewart and Lehman recommend against using the uh, lacquer-based head cement uh, because it does melt the uh, coating on the wire. I haven't found this to be an issue uh, myself, and I tend to think that if the solvent in the lacquer-based head cement, so the lacquer thinner, if that does melt the coating on the uh, plastic coated wire, as long as it doesn't come unattached, if it, if it melts together with the thread base that we're adding and then it evaporates and dries, um, to me that sounds a little bit stronger um, because you're melting um, the thread into the plastic coating. I do not think that the lacquer in the uh, head cement that I've shown how I mix my lacquer based head cement, I don't believe that there's enough thinner in the mix uh, to really do much harm to the plastic coating uh, on the Surflon. So the Surflon, uh, I'm mostly using the 30 pound. That's what I like with most of my streamers, or if I was using it um, to add the stinger hook for the jigs. Uh, but you could also go down to 10 or 20 pound. Two, two other good um, materials. They're, of course, they, they start to get a little bit thinner as you go uh, to the lower numbers. The thing with the coated wire, uh, in terms of making stinger hooks for the jigs, is you can't tie a knot in it. You can't snell it to the hook. You would need to attach the stinger hook to the coated wire, very similar to how you would tie a tandem streamer. But what we're gonna do here today is use a stinger with a 30 pound monofilament. Like I said, it's the uh, Berkeley Trilene big game monofilament. So we get things switched around again. In the vise I have a 3 8 ball head. I use my size A rod wrapping thread and I start the thread by locking it in the middle of the shank and walking it down towards the bend of the hook. They're touching wraps, though I'm a little bit sloppy. They're, they're slightly open, which is just fine. Then we can take our snelled hook, the 3399, number six. And you're gonna place that underneath your last wrap and center the line on top of your hook shank. And then the space can be any distance you're comfortable with, but as a rule, the space I'm looking for, or the length I'm looking for, is at least two hook eye lengths between the bend of the hook and the eye of the stinger. So on my vise, to make it quick, I do have the markings on top, and I know that the hook point of the stinger will rest on the outside edge of the last marking on my vise. 
So I switch hands, try to keep the uh, monofilament on top of the hook shank. I walk four or five touching wraps towards the bend of the hook, past the point, and then I can reverse the direction with touching wraps, and if they're slightly open wraps, that is okay. And occasionally you have to stop and just readjust that monofilament back to the top. Make sure it stays on the top of the hook shank. And at this point, I'll just take my arrow point scissors and I'm just going to nip this away. So the monofilament stops right at the base of the jig head. And then I can continue wrapping up to the jig head. And again, you can just use your nail and adjust the uh, monofilament to make sure that it's centered. And I'm using a fair amount of pressure, as much pressure as I can get away with without breaking the thread. I walk the threads back to about the hook point. Make sure if there were any gaps, I fill that in with wraps. The idea behind the, uh, the way we tie this in is, is very similar to the child's toy, um, the finger cuffs, that when you put your fingers in the tube and you try to pull them out, the harder you pull, the tighter that becomes. This is the same general idea. Then to finish this off, I put my loop of thread underneath my last wrap and a half a dozen wraps back towards the head so I can snip my thread from my spool and pull the tag in through. Now, it was Bates in his description. He would take lacquer-based head cement and on the first layer of thread, add head cement, put the monofilament in place, add head cement, add more wraps, and then add head cement. I just simply have a slightly, a uh, few drops more, thin down, the same head cement that I normally use, but this is just, a, just uh, slightly reduced, little bit more. And I just go, I divide the hook shank into thirds. So there's a drop right down one third. I turn my vise down one third and then down one third. And I have thinned the head cement enough where it really saturates into the threads itself. It doesn't. I'm not looking for it to sit on top of the thread and create that hard candy shell, as I describe it, um, like we would want to see on the head of a streamer or the collar of our jig. Now it was very interesting. Um, I go through um, spurts of interest, I guess. It was it was very interesting uh, recently when I was researching again some of the different uh, books that I have in my collection and looking at George Herder's uh, description and, and explanation and uh, th his section in his book on tying flies and streamers. It was very interesting. Uh, he has a very low opinion of most all streamers, particularly those that come from New England. Um, he called them stupid. Uh, he called them, uh, what was the other term he used? Um, it, basically he thinks they're tied by dudes and uh, just to look fancy, more to catch fishermen as opposed to catching fish. I found it very amusing as I was reading that. Um, so like I've said in the past, when you're reading Herder's uh, stuff, you kind of have to weed through and only pick out the the really good information and kind of weed out his his opinion but I, I found that very interesting so here is 
one that I added the stinger to and it's completely dry. I have a dozen here. If you do 12 at a time, uh, as an example, once you hit the finish the 12th one, you can go back and start putting hair on your first one. This is an interesting pattern. It's not something I have in my inventory. And I tie it for this one specific customer. But it's an interesting color, and I, I might tie a couple extra just to have some for myself, just to try out. But we use a blue thread. This is size A, round nylon, unwaxed. You lock it on just like we were tying the jig as normal. We're going to go right to our steel gray, which is a nice dark bluish gray. Almost looks like soot to me. Um, it's, it's a pretty color, not quite blue done. But you take your pinch and as always, we pull the smaller broken hairs out of the butt ends and then we switch our grip and restack. Just taking out the longer fibers and placing them back in the pinch. Now as always, the tail will be the length of the body past the bend of the hook. And as you can see, with that two hook eye gap, we're still able to hide that stinger hook in the tail of the jig. So this is more of a preference thing if you want the stinger to hang a little bit farther off the back of the back of uh, your jig body, you're gonna just adjust the length of your tail. Once you're happy with your last pinch, hold this pinch tight throughout the whole process this into place. That was about five wraps towards the bend of the hook, three wraps back. We have our nice v-shape in our bucktail. We just give this a twist to the other side of the hook shank. Well, as you can see I think we can get one more out of this tail. Uh, our next color is just the typical yellow. This isn't fluorescent, this is just your standard banana yellow. This does have a few darker hair fibers in it. I'm not much worried about that. Um, a few of the darker fibers from the center of the tail I think are just fine. And again, we're restacking our pinch. And then I can measure it against the gray. Adjust your grip until you get the length that you want. Switch your hands one last time. Keep this tight. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook. A couple wraps back up to the head. Now he's asking for a bit of flash and we're going to use uh, Crystal Flash Smolt Blue. This is KF20 um, and this is Hairline. It's a real nice color. It's just a light blue Crystal Flash. You do see flashes of silver, gold, purple, uh, green as it reflects the light. And what I'm doing is I'm counting out about 10 strands, 10 to 12. It doesn't have to be exact. And just like with our American Shad pattern that we tied a few videos back, replacing the crystal flash right straight down the back like a top wing and just make sure that it's it's centered on that dark gray 
And then you can turn your vise back over to finish the collar. Touching wraps, walking the thread up to the head. And then touching wraps back to the middle of the collar and then back to the head. And about a quarter of the way back towards the center and back to the head. That makes a nice pretty collar and a nice cone shape. At this point you can whip finish by hand. You can use a whip finish tool. I use a thread of an opposite color to place a loop under my last wrap. After you snip your thread, be sure there's always tension between whichever hand is holding the thread and your jig. Before I finish the collar, I like to take the jig out of the vise and lift up on the hair and let it setter, settle, uh, center itself on the point of the hook. The same with the crystal flash. And then I turn it upside down. And what I'm doing here is I try to trim the crystal flash so it's the same length as the hair. They can all be different lengths, a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. But I'm not looking to have anything past the length of the hair itself. Uh, I know there's a lot of tires that, that do it in that fashion. Um, I've always thought that um, those longer fibers actually increase the amount of short strikes you get because those longer hairs are just tickling uh, the walleye nose and you're getting those short strikes regardless of your uh, stinger hook and you're missing fish. Um, but you can put it on any length that you're comfortable with. And to finish this off, I can use the same head cement. I do have another bottle with just my regular viscosity head cement on my other desk, but I'm not a Jedi yet, so I can't, I'm not getting up to get it. What I will do is I will add a light coat here. And then I will add a second coat of this very thin mix. And that's all there is to it. It's a really pretty jig. I, it doesn't have a name. But the colors are certainly eye-catching. And like I said, I might have to tie up Two or three extra of these and throw them in my tackle box just to try out next spring. That crystal flash, the KF20, uh, is just a really, really nice color. It's kind of a, a sky blue or a baby blue, but looks really nice on this jig. So I think that'll do it for us today. If you have any questions or comments uh, on what we did here today, go ahead and put those in the comment section down below. As always, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. Feel free to share any of the videos that we do. and uh, helps with the uh, subscriber base. Um, I, I was kind of grateful that we got this uh, it was just a very small order, but that he wanted stingers because it was something that I haven't shown in, in a, at least a, a little while. So um, it's come up in our conversation, our discussions a few times, and I'm, I'm glad that I was able to show it again today. So I think that'll do it for us today. As always, keep tying and tight lines.